And so here we are again, my dear ones, third Sunday, looking at this thing called Prosperous Being. Welcome into the sanctuary. I'm always so overjoyed to see so many of us who come here to be vested in our spiritual unfoldment and understand what that means, that wonderful, glorious opportunity, that time in our week, perhaps, perhaps in a more profound way than any other time in the week when we truly are here not to get something, not for any other reason, just to be excited about who and what we are and the reality of who and what we are. And so prosperity, the prosperity of being. So we know already from what we've done in this month that it is out of pure consciousness that everything flows, that pure consciousness is a creative force element in the universe, and that within that creative consciousness is all power, all power, all power to speak the word of authority and to realize the truth of the word spoken. We know that now, and we also know that each and every one of us is vested in this thing called life and its fullness. We all know know now, we've heard it over and over again, and some of us have studied it over and over again, but still every time we want to know it a little bit more deeply, a little bit more fully, so that we can what? We want to experience it more fully. Because if we're not experiencing it, it's not working, and we're not working as we could, as far as being who and what we are. We're not here to know God knows we're not here to know more about God. We know enough about God. In fact, we know too much about God. <laughs> we're here to experience the godliness that each and every one of us is, the liveliness that each and every one of us is, the goodliness that each and every one of us is. We want to experience. We want to experience the knowledge we already have. We want to refine the knowledge we already have. We want to let go of some of the knowledge we've already gained and thought was true. And we want to be more open to what really is true. Understanding now that the real knowledge that we're looking for is the knowledge from within ourselves, the wisdom from within ourselves. We know, we know, we know, we've heard it, but we want to experience it now. That each and every one of us came into this life imbued, filled with the power and the authority to think for ourselves, to speak for ourselves, and to realize for ourselves whatever good it is that we desire to realize, whatever that is. We have the power, we have the authority. We just need to come into that understanding and realization that this is the truth, actually, and that I can stand in my word, speak my word, because my word is not my own, we know now. No, as the great master said, my word is not my own. No, it is the word of the one who sent me. And so that's what we have available to us. Now, how do we get there? What must happen for that to be? How can I live a prosperous beingness of life? How can I be the lightness of being? How can I be the fullness of being? How can I be the wholeness of being? Because that is what prosperity is. Make no mistakes about it. That's what it is. It's not the baubles, bangles, and beads, and the stuff and things. That's fun, and you have to collect all of those things. Why? Because when you do, you know that's not it. <laughs> this is not it. Talk to all the elders in the community and they'll tell you, I want to let go of all my stuff and things. I want to downsize. I want to get rid of it all. You see, it's a funny thing. All the things you spend time gathering, you want to let go and be free from so that you can feel that freedom of not being attached to stuff and things which are the greatest of all distractions. So what is it that you and I have available to us to do, not have to, but available to us to do, because it's choice, and if I don't do it now, that's fine. I have all eternity to get there. But I think we're here because we want to go the quicker route, I think. You see, I don't want to spend all my eternal life always endeavoring to become not attached to this, that, and the other, but to be fully free and fully orbed to be all that I am, to stand in the truth, to speak the word of authority and know that it is so. Well, what I have to do is to let go completely of my history. I have to let all my history go. I have to stop 
over-identifying all of the time or much of the time with my personality, egoic self. God, help us. That poor personality, egoic self, we expect so much of it, and it's not capable of what we're expecting of it. It's not supposed to be. It's just a vehicle while we're here on planet Earth, three-dimensional planet Earth, I might add. Very dense plane, beautiful and gorgeous though it is. So why would I want to identify myself as truth in all of that? I don't. I want to see it as the beautiful, wonderful morsel I get to taste for the two minutes I'm here, and then move on into an expanded version of life and living in another plane. And so I must, if I really want to take my spiritual life seriously, the spirit that I am seriously, the essence that I am seriously, I have to stop this nonsense of all the time looking over my shoulder into my history. I have to get rid of all of the labels I've slapped upon myself and others have slapped upon me too that I have allowed. I have to release all of that and I have to let it go. I have to stop being worried and concerned about what everybody and everything thinks about me. Who cares? What is important is what I think about myself. Why? Oh, here's a new one. All thought is creative. All thought is creative. Every single thought is a seed and every single idea is a plant. And you and I are seeding and planting these thoughts and ideas in our subconscious mind, the inner interior, biggest, widest, deepest part of ourselves. And as a result, we are harvesting what we sow. All thought is creative. Every thought is an act of creation. We have to understand that. It's the basis upon which this principle stands, the principle of science of mind and spirit, that all thought is creative, and that each and every one of us is creating all of the time, through the way we think, through the way we feel, and through the way we behave. So, let go of the history, let go of the past, let go of the labels, let go of all the things we've been thinking about ourselves that do not serve us well and do not support the true essence of our being. We have to stop it and let it go. We really and truly must. And let me tell you, never was there a more wonderful time in our lives when those labels are flying all over the place, especially through this wonderful thing called social media. Yeah, some of us don't want to go there anymore because we're afraid of what we'll see about ourselves as presented by others and so on and so forth, etc. I listened to a program the other very late last night and it was a group of actors and so on. And they all, most of them said the same thing. Oh no, I never watch my reviews. I never look at what people say about me because I just don't want that heaviness to weigh upon. But it might be something good. Yeah, I know, but there could be a whole lot that's not so good, so I don't even go there. I think that's wise. I think it's wise. However, when we're youngsters, it's not the same. We're inclined to be curious, more curious, and we want to know, and so on. But I mean, that's a talk for another time, social media. Right here and right now, what we want to get deeply entrenched within our subconsciousness is that I stand in the power and the authority of the truth that lives, moves, and has its being in and through and by means of me. And when I can step out of my personality, egoic self, and when I can put on the mind that is in the Christed awareness of me, the Buddha mind that is within me, and when I can speak that word with authority, and that means without the shadow of a doubt in it, without any if, ands, and buts, but I can speak that word and know that it is so and feel that it is so and declare that it is so. It is so. That's the teaching. That's the law. It's the law. It's universal law. It's universal principle. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can block it. Nothing can deny it. Nothing is more awesomely powerful than it is. And all else... <coughs> All the mini powers and the power mongers amongst us, including ourselves, must bow down before it. Must bow down before it. And when I'm in the word and the word is in me and I'm ready to speak its authority, yes, it's good for me to be modest and humble, 
with regard to my personality, egoic self, it is a very good thing to be modest and humble there. But when I'm ready to speak that word, I need to speak it with full force, full power, full authority, and full strength, knowing my word is not my own, it is the word of the one that lives and moves and has its being in me, and it is omni, omniscient. It is omni, what is it? Omni, well that's one, omni, Omni. <laughs> Omnipotent. Omniscient. Omnipresent. Like you've never heard that before. And all that means is, it can do what it wants to do, accomplish what it wants to accomplish, achieve what it wants to achieve, and when it is speaking, in authority. Do you remember what they said about Jesus? He speaks as one who has authority. He speaks as one who has authority. When he spoke, you knew that this was true. Of course, yes, master, I'm healed. No doubt about it. How do you speak your word is the question for this week. How are you speaking your word? How are you proclaiming your good? How are you owning the good that you desire? Or are you? Because if you are, it is so. It is so. There's nothing to stop it. There's nothing to block it. There's nothing more awesomely powerful. Nothing to stop it. Nothing to block it. Nothing more awesomely powerful. We could absolutely, we could get on down with stating the truth. Our affirmations don't have to be staid, they don't have to be boring, they don't have to be, you know, passe. Our affirmations can be anything, like the youngsters, when they learn to, the little ones, when they learn to do treatment work, their ending was not, and so it is, it was over and out. <laughs> over and out. And they spoke with authority, those little ones. And those little ones can accomplish a great deal because there's nothing in the way of them as far as egoic personality traits are concerned. They can, they can trust. They can know, they can feel it. They really, really can. It's like the little five-year-old when they were talking to their teacher and the teacher says, okay, so Jacqueline, what do you think about God? And she went, mm -hmm. I think God is not a think. I think, I think God is a feel. Unless you can know that God is a feel, it's not happening. It's not happening. You gotta feel it. You gotta be one with it. You gotta squeeze out all of that stuff that pus of negativity and toxicity before you move into knowing what you need to know. You gotta let it all go, it's history, it's fact. And fact is not always truth, as you know, it's just fact. And even if the fact is true, it's just fact. It's just circumstance, it's just situation. And you can own that and claim that and become one with that and ocon and kvetch with that. Or you can say, you know what? I don't think so. It's circumstance, it's situation, it's as it is right now, but it won't always be so. Like the wonderful little boy, I've shared the story before because I love it so much. He's a small child, he grows up in a poverty kind of background, not much of anything really. His dad works in a race stables, in a, in a, in a stables that trains horses and so on, and very often he brings the little boy with him, and the boy gets to absolutely adore and love horses, and always sees himself with horses when he grows up. One day the teacher says he's about seven, one day the teacher says, you know, I want you to draw a picture of um, how you're going to be when you grow up into being a man or a woman. And so they all draw their pictures, and he gets his picture back, and the teacher says, your picture is very good, but it's not very realistic. And he draws himself <clears throat> as in charge of this great big um, stables. And he's the boss, and he has the boss's cap on, boss, and so on and so forth. She says it's good, but 
do me another picture that's more in keeping with, you know, what you think you really can be when you grow up. This is a little bit far-fetched. So he says, okay, teach your sister, and draws the very same picture and hands it in. She gives it back to him. He says, no, that won't do. Draw the Third time, he draws the picture. So she gives him the lowest grade for the picture. Grown-up man, he comes back, makes a big contribution to his school and owns the stable that his father worked in when he was a kid. You see, that child knew. He spoke with authority. He drew with authority. He felt with authority. He owned what was his to own, and it happened, it happened. Now, how do you own your good when you've given yourself a treatment or you've gone to receive a treatment? How do you own your good? Do you step into the authority of the word that was spoken? Do you say, it really is so, I'm jazzed, it is the case, this is great, and then do you go away thinking like it's so, feeling like it's so, and starting to behave like it is so? Do you? Do you? Because if you're not, you're not getting it. Oh, you'll get there, and you'll, you'll experience something or another, maybe not the whole thing, and it'll take a while, but for the ones who own and claim and stand in the power of the word that is spoken through them by something greater than themselves, what would that be? I think we've heard this one before. There is a power for good in the universe, greater than you are, greater than I am, greater than everything is. And we use it every single time we think. Every single time we feel we're using it. But on what side of life? Look on the bright side of life or not. Now, am I going to come to it as a Yoda or as I'm going to come to it as a Darth Vader? I mean, either way, there's equal opportunity in you and me to go either way. Absolutely there is. There always will be as long as you're wearing a body. We're living in a dualistic world. That means dichotomized world. And our task is to somehow unify that, bring ourselves to unity in a dualistic world. That's all enlightenment means, that I can find my unified state of being, I can find peace of mind, peace of heart, peace of body, peace of soul, in all of the chaos. Because at the center of the eye of the storm, there's always the wholeness, and the peacefulness, and the unity of being. Never fear the chaos. Look into it. Take it on and move into its eye, and do not be put off by the turbulence and the truculence that gets you there. Remember the first time when you were on a plane and you experienced turbulence and truculence and you thought, this is it, I'm going down, this is it. Do you remember that? And sometimes it's worse than others, but now I get on a plane and if it happens, I'm just, it's just turbulence and truculence. And who knows, it could be more than that, but I'd be still sitting there saying it's just turbulence and truculence, <laughs> and so on. And isn't it awesome that, have you noticed when you're flying through the sky, how some cloud formations can be like blinking mountains when you move into them. And when you're looking up at them, they're these fluffy little things, gossamer things that you could run your hand through, you know, and all of that. And then when you're up there in a plane and you're moving through a whole bank of it, it's a whole different experience, is it not? And yet, it's a cloud. Am I going to make it into something else? It's a cloud. It's not a mountain. It's a cloud. You know, Loretta de La Roche was a, it's all attitude, and we've had this over and over again. Everything is attitude, attitude, attitude. I get up every morning and I get to choose. My God, I am brilliant enough. <clears throat> I'm intelligent enough. I'm together enough to choose. It doesn't matter what the circumstances in my life, when I get up and open my eyes, I can say, today is going to be a great, marvelous day. I can say, oh, good God, I have to face into this day. I wish the hell it was the end of the week. <laughs> up to you, up to me, how it's going to be. Because I decide, and no one else decides how my day is going to be. No one has that authority except me.
because I've been given authority over myself. And I can speak my word of authority at any time. And if I back it up, if I back it up with my thinking, my feeling, and the way I'm doing, it is so. But I have to play my part. To understand how all of this works, you and I have to understand what the nature of life is, what the nature of life is, the nature of life, the nature of good, the nature of God is what? It's givingness. Go back to your handbook, look in the glossary, look up spirit, and it says spirit is the givingness of life back onto itself. So you and I have to understand the nature of life. You see, the nature of life is to give. And the eternal life itself is always giving and giving and giving, is everlasting givingness is what it is. And so when you understand that, there's no good thing that you need be short of if you make yourself available, and to make yourself available to receiving is to create the space, the availability for the good to come through. It's already in you, it has to come through you though. You have to let it out. See, healing is the revealing of the, good, of the, of the health and the well-being that is already within, we're told. Healing is the revealing of the health that already is within. You just have to open whatever that is, you have to open to release it and let it out. So the gift that gives must have a receiver. There is no concept of gift unless there is a receiver. If the gift is not received, there's no gift, understanding, or awareness. And giving and receiving is part of the one action. It completes the action. It completes the circle. Giving and receiving. So you and I have to learn to be good receivers. And the way we learn to be good receivers, believe it or not, is to become the greatest givers of all. It's like a conundrum. So... In order for me to stand in the power of my word and in the authority of it, I have to prove it. I have to use the principles, apply the principles, and show myself. Prove me herewith, it says in scripture. If I will not open the windows of heaven and send forth such blessings that you will not be able to receive. But before that, what did it say? And you never hear the quote before it. It says, if you bring me your tithes, that's what it says. If you bring me your tides, see if I won't open the windows of heaven and let through all these blessings that there you won't have a room to be able to contain them. And what does bring me your tides mean? It means this. Be who you are. Be the givingness of life back onto itself. Become a giver, a giver, a giver. And some people sit more tightly on their pockets and their purses and their wallets when they hear that. No, nobody in this room, of course. But some do. Don't ask me for my money, I'll tell you this much. Don't interfere with a couple of things in my life is that, as I heard somebody say once, in a church um, kitchen when they said, somebody had taken their sandwich, don't interfere with my food or my money. <laughs> Never interfere with my food or my money, you see. Well, if you become the givingness of life back onto itself, I tell you, there won't be enough room for all those blessings that pour back into you. So let's stop being so stingy in all kinds of, in all kinds of ways. To sum it up, must always Give thanks, be in thanks, live in thanksgiving. Thanks for everything. In all things we're told, give thanks. So get used to being thankful, 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 thankful for the good and the bad and the indifferent. It doesn't say just give thanks when everything is good. It says in all times and cases, give thanks. Second thing is keep your promises. If you're going to promise something, keep your promise. Whatever that something is, it doesn't matter what it is, keep your promises. Because a promise made is a debt unpaid, and when you make a promise, it's so much easier to make a promise and say, I'll give when, I'll be good when, it will happen when. I can assure you, 
It's harder to give when you have all the stuff and things that you want. When you get what you want and it comes to you, it is much more challenging to give than if you're not used to giving before that. So keep your promises. If you have made a promise, don't let it just be the bargaining power you're using in order to get what you want and then forget about it. If you make a promise, keep a promise. And the third thing is in all things, feel grateful, be grateful, 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 grateful. Gratitude is the attitude of latitude. Thanksgiving is always opening the gates to blessings and keeping your word, keeping your promise, standing in your power and in your authority will always stand you in good stead. And above all else, know who you are when you speak your word and know yourself more than you have been knowing yourself and speak your word more than you have been speaking your word if you want to have a fabulous, glorious life which was intended for you. That you may have life and have it in abundance and that your joy may be complete and that you may know peace that passes understanding. It's the only divine design for you. There's no other divine design for you. That's it. So don't withhold from yourself. Open the sleuth gates, stand in your power, Forget the personality self and become all that you are. Speak the word, know the word, be the word. Act as it is so and it will always be so because you can. Nothing is lacking in you now and there's nothing else you have to do and you don't have to take another class and you don't have to take another seminar and you don't have to become good. You already are good. You can't be more good or gooder than you already are. You just have to wake up and realize it. And so it is. Yeah.